please welcome your next presenter, Han Lindahl. I work at a bakery, and one of the popular things to do these days is called a gender reveal. And that means ordering a cake, which secretly has pink or blue frosting inside, then hosting a party and inviting all of your friends over to guess what color of frosting is inside of the cake. Hell of a time, right? <laughs> so really, this is a sex reveal, because gender is what we make of it. But, <laughs> but what happens if it's not that easy to answer the question, is it a boy or a girl? What happens if your baby is dealt a biological hand somewhere outside of that usual male-female binary? Well, <laughs> it's surprisingly common, actually. Um, as many as one in 2,000 children are born intersex, meaning that they have some characteristic that doesn't neatly fit into that binary. Um, this may be evident at birth, but it also might not be. And for being so common, it's actually sort of unheard of, so I'm here to fix that. Um, so, <laughs> fasten your seatbelts. Uh, because I am going to take you on a journey not through Ralphie's digestive system, but through some of the nuances of the human sex development process. Um, I'm not a doctor or a biologist or the frizz, but I will do the best I can. So <laughs> it all begins at conception with chromosomes, um, an X and typically an X or a Y that you get from your parents. But really these are just letters and it takes a long time actually for them to become anything more. Um, one of the main signals of sex development is something called the SRY gene, typically on the Y chromosome, which activates and says, hey, let's go down the male path and start developing testes. Gonads would become testes. But what happens if your SRY gene decides not to show up for work that day, it, if it's this guy? Well, that can actually happen. Um, so you have a Y chromosome, but you miss those signals to start going down the male path. The default is actually female, so you can have a Y chromosome but just kind of be missing those signals. Um, so next is gonads, which can become either ovaries or testes, depending on your signals. Um, this slide is intentionally left blank because there's really not going to be any sort of good visual for gonads. <laughs> I, I've tried, and you do not want to run that Google search. So this is where we come to me, because you can be born intersex and really not even know it. Um, so here's me, four, blissfully unaware, collecting as many Beanie Babies as possible. Um, so this goes on until about age 14, and let me tell you, the only thing more awkward than puberty, going through that, is actually not going through puberty and finding out that you have a Y chromosome and gonads inside of you, and also Invader Zim as a fashion statement. <laughs> so. The words I got were gonadal dysgenesis, which is a fancy way of saying that your gonads decided not to do anything. Um, it would also make a pretty good death metal band if you grunted it. <laughs> I, overall, I took the news pretty well, um, but this is actually not the only way that you can get an intersex mix. Um, there's a lot of steps to human sex development, and I'm definitely glossing over some of it, but I, for the heck of it, will take you through one other scenario that can happen. So, say you have a Y chromosome, um, it's actually also possible to still end up phenotypically female, even if your SRY gene decides to show up for work, like this guy. So sometimes you can have a Y chromosome, um, SRY gene, which means testes. However, your body can have a mutation that makes you unable to respond to testosterone. And crazy thing, it actually gobbles up that testosterone, spits out estrogen instead, which despite the fact that there's internal testes and not ovaries doing the work, it actually makes you hyper-feminine on the outside. And this is androgen insensitivity syndrome, which is actually one of the most common intersex conditions. There can be some dissonance there because a lot of people with AIS identify as cisgender women. So sometimes that can be a hard thing to come to terms with, which brings up a salient point that sometimes intersex is just your biology, but sometimes it can also function as an identity. And people debate whether it belongs in the ever-extending LGBTQIA, in which I is for intersex, A is for asexual. Um, <laughs> um, I personally would say that it does, um, because even though intersex is not about um, gender or sexual orientation, it still kind of goes back to being in a world that's often built on binaries and not fitting into that, like Shelf Silverstein is a master at illustrating. Um, Intersex doesn't tend to get a lot of media attention, and if it does, it can be kind of sensationalized. 
One issue that happened a few years ago, this is Castor Semenya, an athlete who was denied the right to compete as a woman because athletic sex testing is usually done on either the basis of the SRY gene or your testosterone levels, and you can have high traces of both of those and still be a woman, like in AIS when your body converts testosterone. Hmm. So over the past couple of decades, things have gotten markedly better for intersex children. Um, in the 50s and earlier, the default was for your parents and doctors to do surgeries against your consent and just kind of bury your medical records or throw them into the fireplace. Um, now it's better. Um, there's still a long way to go. One really great resource is the Interface Project, in which um, intersex people from all over the world, some of whom identify as men, women, or neither, um, tell their stories in just short three to five minute videos. They operate under the moniker, Nobody is Shameful. I would definitely point your browser in that direction. So depending on how generously you define intersex, um, if you're on the broader range of that statistic, um, it's almost as common as being a natural redhead. Um, one in 200 for that, by the way. And to illustrate kind of this genetic luck is a friend of mine, Carly, who is a fellow XY lady and advocate out of North Carolina. So you might be asking, why am I here and why have I chosen to do this presentation? Wouldn't there be something else? Well, really it's because for being so common, intersex is very often stigmatized or medicalized or maybe worse, unheard of. Because you can Google intersex and you'll hit anatomy diagrams very quickly, but you won't hit a real person talking about their experience and I want better. Nature is really a spectrum, and there's a lot of really intricate and interesting in-betweens that I'd like to focus on. Nature never works in black and white, except for maybe when it thought of pandas. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>